Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. Today we'll be talking about European cooperation in the fields of education and training. We'll look at how it's evolved over the years and how it may continue to develop in the future. So get ready for the lesson. How you organize education and training is the responsibility of member states. However, the EU plays a major role in making education more accessible across borders and helping member states to modernize their education systems so they can better prepare their citizens for the future, equipping them with the skills they need to become active, responsible and engaged citizens in a Europe that aims at being increasingly green and digital. The best known examples of this European effort are possibly the Bologna process that led to the establishment of the European higher education area and the Erasmus Plus program which encourages student mobility. The Copenhagen Declaration, adopted in 2002, aimed at improving the quality and attractiveness of vocational training in Europe. And in 2010, within the Framework for Cooperation in Education and Training, the AT2020, the EU set itself some targets. Now, ten years later, there's no denying progress has been made on a few of them. Denise Shierkop follows education issues within the European Parliamentary Research Service. I could mention three success stories. First, participation in early childhood education of children aged four up to school age rose by 5%, reaching our 95% target. Second, the rate of early school leavers came down by almost 4%, very close to our target of less than 10%. And third, tertiary education graduates rose by 8%, surpassing the 40% target. But the number of underachieving 15-year-olds remains high and the participation of adults in learning is still low. So what's the EU's plan to improve this? To step up cooperation. Cooperation has achieved important results, yet we cannot stop. Gender, origins, where we live and family income still influence our chances in education. So education ministers agreed to cooperate for another 10 years. The European Commission is also working on establishing a European education area. And the European Parliament keeps a close watch with a focus on high-quality, inclusive education and the added value of a European dimension. The European Commission, the Council of the EU and the European Parliament agree that cooperation in education and training needs to be reinforced, although the three institutions have yet to adopt a single approach. The Commission has set out its vision for a European education area by 2025 in three different communications. The latest of them, presented in 2020, emphasises the importance of quality and inclusive education, investing in green and digital skills and promoting closer and deeper cooperation between universities. The Council, on the other hand, has endorsed another framework for cooperation up to 2030. And while there are clear similarities between its priorities and the ones identified by the Commission, the two sets do not match entirely. Meeting in May 2021, EU education ministers made clear there's no room for complacency in terms of efforts to improve access to education and the quality of it, and called on member states to ensure that programmes such as Erasmus+, the European Social Fund or InvestEU are focused truly on inclusivity and are thus accessible to those who need them most. Ministers also agreed that the European Universities Initiative could really bring universities and other non-academic institutions closer together in order to improve education, research and innovation, as well as preparing citizens for future challenges. As for the European Parliament, debate on this topic is still in its early stages, but rapporteur Michaela Sodjurova believes all EU actors should share the same strategic approach towards a European education area. Such an approach should be based on concrete implementation and monitoring measures. We need specific steps such as mutual recognition of diplomas, common reference level for English language knowledge or support to teachers through dedicated academies. More broadly, we need a European dimension in education curricula. And if you want to know more on this topic, look for Denise Shercop's briefing on the EPRS website. 
This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.